I'm the teller of wondrous stories. Every time you play this record, the world of pretend will come alive. As you listen, you can color in your coloring book or read along as we tell you a story. You can also tell who's speaking by following the cartoons on the edge of your page. The sound of this chime means you turn your page. Now we're ready to begin our adventures into the world of pretend. Never had there been such excitement and bustling, for it was just three days and twelve hours and fourteen minutes before the biggest event of the year. Every elf and pixie had a job to do, and each one was doing it and doing it well. In charge of everything was none other than the greatest magician of all, Merlin. Merlin's room was in the East Tower, simply because all magicians' rooms were always in the East Tower of a palace. Merlin was so busy that Santa himself could hardly get in for a visit. Go away! I'm too busy! Come back in three days! Go away! Well, I have to see you, Merlin. It's very important. Please! Oh, I can't stop now. I have to check all of these children's names for Santa. It's about Santa. You have to see me. Oh, it's about Santa? Well, come in then. What about Santa? Well, Merlin, I don't know how to tell you but I can't find it. You can't? Terrible, oh, no, 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 no. What are we going to do? What? Can't find it? Pixie, what can't you find? I can't find Santa's magic toy bag, the one that never empties. If we can't find it, I don't know what Santa will do. Let me think, where did I see it last? I know, I know where it is. Where? I have to start packing it. It needed a patch after last Christmas, so Mrs. Claus said that she was going to patch it. So she must have it. Thank you, Merlin. You're so clever. You know everything. Not everything, Pixie. Just nearly everything. Well, I know you're busy. See you later. And out of the room scampered Pixie, down the peppermint-striped staircase, through the gingerbread halls, right past Santa's workshop. Before long, Pixie was standing in front of the chocolate drop kitchen. He pushed open the door, and there was Mrs. Claus, Nearly as jolly as Santa, her gray hair was piled high on top of her head with a large wooden mixing spoon pushed right through the middle of the knot. Mrs. Claus was very busy making chocolate candies for Santa to put into each child's stocking. Chocolate drops and candy canes, Christmas time is near. Now's the time for pretty presents, Christmas time is here. Sugar melting in the pot, add the syrup too. Now the flavors one by one, there's so much to do. All the elves and Santa too, fill the world with joy. Bringing gifts and happiness for each girl and boy. Chocolate drops and candy canes, Christmas time is near. Now's the time for pretty presents, Christmas time is here. Mrs. Santa Claus. Yes? Who is it? Look down here, Mrs. Claus. Pixie, there you are. What's wrong? I have no time to stop and chat. I have three million more candies to make before Santa leaves. I need to know where you put Santa's toy bag so that I can fill it up for Santa to use. His toy bag? I know I sewed it when Santa got home last year. And then I put it... <gasps> I gave it to Santa to keep. You gave it to Santa? Then I'll have to get it from him. 
I think he's in the toy factory checking on the dolls that the doll elves were making. Thank you, Mrs. Claus. I have to run. It's getting very late. Pixie, before you go, here, taste this chocolate drop. How does it taste? <laughs> yummy, 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 yummy. <laughs> now be on your way. And as fast as Pixie could turn, he flew out the candy kitchen and slid down the banister that went round and round like a roller coaster. <laughs> That's fun! If I wasn't in such a rush, I'd climb right back up and ride down again. <laughs> Pixie knew he had no time for games. Not till after the holiday rush was over. So Pixie put on his furry gloves and put on his scarf very tightly round his neck for it would not do for him to catch cold so very close to Christmas. He then opened the candy cane front door and stepped outside. It was very cold. Probably the coldest day it had been at North Pole all year. The snow was falling and it looked like little flakes of iced candy as it fell to ground. Pixie ran the four or five steps to the doll factory door and was just about to open it when he heard something. It was Santa talking to his number one elf. I think that these dolls will be the best that I've ever brought to the children. Just look at the eyes and the hair, Santa. They are beautiful. No, these will make lots of little girls very happy. Santa, could I ask you something very important? Why, little Pixie, you know that you can ask me anything you want. Well, I asked Merlin, and he told me to ask Mrs. Claus, and I did, and she told me to ask you, and so here I am. So, could I ask you... Pixie, just what is it that you want? Santa, where is your toy bag? I can't find it. I've looked everywhere, and it's getting late, and my job is to pack it, and I can't, because I have no idea where it is. <laughs> Don't get worried, Pixie. <laughs> but I am worried. If I can't find it, there won't be any way to carry all the toys. Why, I know just where it is, Pixie. Well, I'm glad. Now, Santa, can you tell me where it is so I can go and get it? It's on the very top shelf in my room of wonder. Thank you, Santa. I'll go and get it and fill it so it will be ready in time. And with a twinkle in his eye, the little Pixie scampered out of the factory workshop. He ran across the yard to Santa's room of wonder. Standing in front of the castle that was Santa's private workshop were three of Santa's favorite reindeer, Donna, Cupid, and Blitzen. Hi, little friends. Here, have some sugar. I always keep some in my pocket for you. <laughs> the three reindeer knew what Pixie had in his hand and quickly nibbled all the sugar that was held out to them. You had better be ready for the great sleigh ride in just a few days. With that, Pixie turned and opened the door. The rooms that were Santa's were a very private world. So warm and cozy. A fire was crackling in the fireplace. The smell of Christmas filled every corner of the most special palace in Toyland. Pixie busily climbed up to the very spot Santa said that his bag, now empty of toys, would be. And as Santa had said, the bag was there, all neatly folded on the top shelf. I now have to get back to the packing and wrapping division and start stuffing the bag with toys and goodies. Just as Pixie was about to leave the room, he noticed a light was on on Santa's magical viewfinder. I wonder why that's on. Santa never had left it on before. And being a very curious elf, Pixie ran over to the viewfinder. I think I had better tell you just what Santa's viewfinder is. Well, it's a very large telescope that can look down from the top of the world at the North Pole and can find out just what is happening all around the world. There is only one viewfinder like this in the world, and Santa has it. My, my! I've never looked through this before. Oh, there's France and England and America. Everybody's getting ready for Christmas. Everybody's so happy about Santa coming. Pixie looked at the entire world. Never had he seen such happiness as all people of Earth were preparing for the arrival of Santa. Just as Pixie was about to turn the viewfinder off, he noticed a very dark part of Earth where there was not even one light for Christmas and no laughing children. And being as curious as I told you he was, he focused in on the dark and dreary palace of Dr. Bittersweet and his pal Crunch. It was easy to see that the Christmas spirit was not there. I wonder what they're saying. So Pixie turned up the volume control. 
to hear just what was being said. <laughs> well, it's nearly that time of year again. I know, I know. <laughs> the time for Santa to fly in the sky. But I'll put a stop to it this year. But every year you try to stop Christmas <laughs> and every year you fail. But this year I've been working harder than ever. His sled will never get off the ground this year. And the children will have no Christmas. <laughs> I'm clever and I mean. As mean as they come. Going to mean school for 349 long nights have really paid off. <laughs> well, Bitter, could I ask you something? Why, certainly, pal. Last year, as I remember, uh. you lit fires in all the chimneys in the world <laughs> so that when Santa slid down them, he would get a hot seat. <laughs> oh, that was a good idea. A brainstorm. I must pat myself on the back. <laughs> then how come it didn't work? Oh, how was I to know that Santa would see the smoke coming out of the chimney before he slid down? All he had to do was drop snow into the chimney and it put the fires out. Something like that always happens. But not this year. This year, my plan is so devilish, I can't even stand myself for thinking it up. Well, if you want me to help you, Dr. <laughs> Bittersweet, you'd better tell me all about it. <laughs> well, Crunch, it goes like this. And just as Dr. Bittersweet started to tell his pal Crunch his devilish plan, the viewfinder that Little Pixie was watching started to act strangely. Pixie tried to adjust it. Oh! What a time for something like this to happen. Maybe if I turn this knob, or, or, or that one, or, or maybe... <laughs> Try as he would, the viewfinder would not work. Pixie then decided that the only person who could help was Santa. So he climbed up where Santa kept a special bell to be rung only in times of emergency. Pixie rang it again and again. In a flash, the peppermint door swung open and in rushed Santa and Merlin the magician. Who rang the bell? What's wrong? Has anything happened to the toys? Uh, who rang the, uh, the warning bell? It was I, Santa. I rang the bell. But why? This is only to be rung if something has happened in Toyland. Pixie, I know it was by mistake that you rang it. Was it a mistake, little one? There is much work to do. It was not my mistake, Santa. I rang it on purpose. But why? Did you just want to hear it ring? No, 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 no. Santa, Merlin, it's terrible. Well, tell us what happened. I can't. You've been so happy. Well, I tell you, it will spoil your day. Oh, no. Tell us what's wrong. It's Dr. Bittersweet. Oh, oh. No. Bittersweet, oh, no. As Pixie told Santa and Merlin all that he had seen and heard through the viewfinder about evil Dr. Bittersweet, Santa gave a knowing smile, nodding his head back and forth every now and then. Merlin listened very carefully to everything Pixie was saying. The story was told without even stopping once, and when it was done, the little elf looked up at Santa and said, And that's the truth, every last word of it. And Santa and Merlin, you don't even look surprised. Well, we aren't. No, we're not. But I thought he would have given up by this time. G given up? I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, not everybody likes Christmas. No, it's hard to believe that there, there are a few people who do not like the sound of children laughing with joy and, and jumping with happiness. For some reason, such a man as Dr. Bittersweet. Every year since the beginning of time, he and his friends have tried to do something to ruin Christmas. I don't believe it, Santa. Not Christmas. That's impossible. Why, nothing is impossible, little one. I keep a record of all of the terrible things Dr. Bittersweet has tried right here in the Book of Time. I have always noticed that great big book on your desk, but it has a lock on it. It is locked so that no one can learn of Dr. Bittersweet's terrible Christmas deeds. Last year, I thought he would win. It was a close call. What happened? Why, let me unlock the book, and you can see for yourself. So Santa took the golden key that he always wore around his belt and unlocked the large book. Winds in an 
icy chill filled the room as the giant book was opened. The book was very old, for it had been started at the beginning of time. Pixie could not believe his eyes at the wonders of all the days gone by. Santa, look there, see that page? Remember what Dr. Bittersweet tried to do? Why, how could I forget? Little Maria, poor child. He tried to make her steal a doll, for if she had stolen it, I would not go to her, for that would have made her a bad little girl, and she would have had a very sad Christmas. Here, here is the picture. Can I hear what they're saying? I can make the picture come to life. Could he, Santa? Well, I don't see why not. But when the picture comes alive, you must be very quiet. We don't want to erase them from the magic pages of the book. I'll be so quiet, you won't even know that I'm here. Then begin your magic. At once, Santa. The great magician took from a silver bag a handful of crushed stars and sprinkled it over the yellow page. At once, the people began to move, and then they began to speak. I hope that Santa will come to me this Christmas like he does other children. But he won't. Santa has forgotten you. You are too poor. Santa does not like poor children. But I've been good all year and did everything Mother told me to do. And doing everything and being a goody-goody, what will it get you? A visit tomorrow night from Santa. I want a doll like the ones in that store. Look over there. Oh, that's only for rich children. Go over to the store. Take it. Look, they have so many. If you take one, they won't miss it. Well, they do have a lot of them. <laughs> take my hand, Maria. I'm your friend. Come. Your hand, it's so cold. As you hold it, it will warm up. Let's skip into the store. I'll open the door. There, we're inside. It's so beautiful, and so many toys <laughs> and... There, there, on that shelf is the doll you want. Take it. There must be hundreds of dolls. <laughs> Take one. The lady's not looking. I'll take it. <laughs> I want the doll so much. I'm your friend. Take the doll, and I'll watch out that no one is watching. Go, Maria. <laughs> this will be a Christmas you will never forget. <laughs> Santa, strike another child off your list. Maria is doing something bad. You will disappoint her, and there will be a sad child on Christmas morning, and I'll be so happy. <laughs> I'm back, and I have the doll, see? Ah, you took it. Now, let's get out of the store, and you could run home with it, and it will be yours. Why, Maria, I remember all children, rich or poor. It's not riches that counts. It's the goodness that's important. Remember, Maria, I'm making a list and checking it twice, going to find out who's naughty or nice. <laughs> Funny look on your face. What's wrong? I'm putting the doll back. You want me to be bad so Santa will forget me, and I will. Uh, I'm uh, never going to uh, listen to bad advice from friends oh, again. Oh, drat it! Foiled again! Maria didn't do wrong, but I'll find another child. I will! I will! The page is fading. What happened to Maria Santa? Well, I brought her the most beautiful doll that my doll factory had ever made. And she is the happiest child that there ever was. A happy ending. Oh, I love happy endings. But this page, Santa, what are you doing up in a tree? <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened last year. That was the closest call yet. Well, it was written at the beginning of time that no one must ever see me at work on Christmas, that all children and parents must be asleep. If anybody sees Santa working, he can never return and there will never be another magic night. That is why I always give Santa this magic dust of invisibility. If Santa hears someone coming into the room where he is working, he sprinkles this magic dust over himself and poof, he is invisible. Last Christmas, it was terrible. Oh, I came so close to being seen. That would have been terrible. 
Was it Dr. Bittersweet's doing? Oh, it was. You can see him in this picture, hiding. I see him, Merlin. Merlin, can you make this picture come to life? <laughs> do it, Merlin. I want to see just what old Bitter tried to do. If you want my magic, I shall do it. A drop of the dust of life over the page of time past. A drop of the dust of forgotten time. The pictures are moving. Remain silent. The past does not like to be alive again. Ah, I failed last Christmas, but this time I won't. <laughs> Santa, I'll get you this year. I was so clever, hiding in Santa's sleigh and cutting a hole in the bag where the dust of invisibility is kept. Ah, now, when we get to the next house, I will wake up the people who live there and make them think a robber is downstairs. They'll run down and see Santa. <laughs> no more Christmas, no more Santa. Oh, bittersweet, you are clever. I'll run up the stairs as soon as Santa arrives. I'm going to wake everybody. Oh, there, they're in the sky. The little fat man and his silly reindeer are coming this way. <laughs> and now to work. <laughs> Hop, Dasha, and Blitzen. Oh, now, down there on the top of the roof. Carefully, quietly. Oh, there. Now stop slowly. Oh, a very good landing. And now for my bag of toys. Oh, there's a fire going in the fireplace. I'd better jump off the roof and go through the front door. Oh, it's lucky that I keep a key that will fit all doors just for emergencies like this. Why, it's a long jump, but I'll do it. These magical boots that I wear will make me land very softly. One, two, three, jump! Oh, my goodness, dogs. I forgot Billy and Jane have two dogs. Why, they're coming here. I better use my dust of invisibility so they won't see me and wake everybody up. What's this? A hole has been cut out of the bottom. The bag is empty and the, and the dogs are coming. Oh, I had better climb this tree. Up I go. Oh, oh I haven't climbed trees since I was a little child. And that was so long ago. I climbed up just in time. Oh, dogs, go away. Oh, what am I going to do? I don't even have a bone for you. They're all in my sleigh. Just then, a light went on in the house. Dr. Bittersweet had awakened the entire household, calling to them in their dreams that there was a robber loose and that the dogs had him up a tree. If they see me, I'll never be able to have a Merry Christmas ever again. The, the, the picture, it's fading. What happened? We'll find out. Turn the page. See? It is me in my room of magic. And you're looking at Santa through your crystal ball. Well, it was a close call, wasn't it, Santa? No, it was. Look into the crystal ball, and you'll see what happened. I think the dogs have him trapped in the oak tree there. I called the police. Imagine a robber on Christmas Eve. Merlin, you have to help me. Make me invisible. I will, Santa, but it's difficult to send magic from so far away. If they see me, it's the end of Christmas, and Bittersweet will have won. I think I have a strong spell. Oh, I hope so. They'll be here any second. Powers of magic, power of the ages, make Santa invisible in the tree. There, up in the oak tree, the dogs are barking again. It's a cat. All that noise for a cat. I'm sorry, but a bitter voice came to me in my dreams and said there was a robber in the backyard. But it was just a cat. Come, let's go back to the house and get some sleep. Christmas morning will soon be here. Ruined again, but I'll get you, Santa. Beware! The picture's fading. Was that last Christmas? It was, and now it looks like Bittersweet is up to his usual tricks. We shall have to be careful. I have never known him to come up to the Palace of Toyland like he is planning. Pixie, 
Watch out for anything that is unusual. You can trust me. But back to work. Our time is growing short and there is much, much left to do. So back to work went Santa, Merlin and Pixie, little knowing that Dr. Bittersweet had already arrived in the magical palace. Well, here I am and I don't like being here. Oh, it's too cold. You look funny all dressed up like an elf. Don't <laughs> laugh at me or I'll dip you in some chocolate and make you into a crunch freeze. That would be yummy. Uh, well, now what? <laughs> what do you mean, now what? But what are we up to? Ah, I have a plan. First, we'll make all the sweet chocolates bitter and all the other candies sour. Come, Crunch, into the candy factory. Down the hall went the very silly Dr. Bittersweet and his pal Crunch. The two of them were the funniest looking elves that you have ever seen. Soon they were in front of the chocolate drop door. I'll knock first. No, just open it. All right, I'll open the door. <laughs> I don't see anybody. Look there. All oh, the chocolate and mwah, so sweet and so good to eat. <laughs> when all the children taste this bitter chocolate, they will hate it and never want Santa to come back. <laughs> How are you going to do it? Well, I'll just drop my bitterness into the sweet chocolate by letting my little finger touch the soft chocolate. Ah, there. <laughs> now it's bitter! Oh, what fun! And now, to the doll factory. I know what I'll do there! <laughs> and out of the candy factory went the two. Just as they left by the front door, Santa and Mrs. Claus came in the back door. It was time for Mrs. Claus to wrap the freshly made candy. There! They're all finished. Oh, you're a good candy maker. <laughs> I'm going to taste a small piece. Oh, my. Why, what? Why, why, this chocolate is different. Very different. How, Santa? <gasps> why, it's bittersweet. And very good. <laughs> I never taste a chocolate like this. And here... Taste these gumdrops, Santa. They're very hard. How does it taste? Sour. Sour drops and, and this tastes like lemon drops. My dear, I think Dr. Bittersweet was here, and unknown to him, he has helped to devise a new candy. Oh, delicious. I'm going to try another piece. Bittersweet chocolate, lemon drops, and sour balls. All because of Dr. Bittersweet. If only he knew that he was helping Santa, what would he say? While all this was happening, the bad doctor and Crunch found their way to the doll factory. Never have I seen so many dolls in my life. Happy pretty dolls. <laughs> when I get through, the dolls will cry tears and be unhappy. Well, how can you do this? Uh, by working all night, adding a very special device to all the dolls. Well, I do this. You go to the other room and do everything that I have written on these pages. You want all this to be done in one night? A little less talk and a lot more work. And the two of them began to work. A little tap here, and a little tap there. Soon the night was over, and a rather tired Dr. Bittersweet stopped work. Just as he made the last tap, Crunch ran into the doll factory. I'm tired. <laughs> did you do all the work? I did. And did you finish? <laughs> I did, indeed. Oh, wait till Santa sees all the toys. We will hide over there and wait. I will have my revenge this year. The very tired Dr. Bittersweet and Crunch hid themselves behind a barrel and waited for Santa to discover all that they had done. Time moved quickly, and soon the factory was a beehive of activity. Hundreds of elves running here and there, wrapping boxes, changing things. Soon the factory doors swung open and Santa and Merlin appeared. All work stopped. Bitter and Crunch were waiting. Something was going to happen and Bittersweet knew it. 
Stop jumping up and down, Bitter. Santa might see you. Oh, this is the most exciting day of my life. Santa got all his little helpers around him and spoke. Why, you all worked very hard this year getting everything ready for my ride in the sky. And this is the moment we have been waiting for. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, but too. last night, something strange happened. What happened, Santa? Someone came into the candy factory and invented a new candy. Ah, I don't like it. Someone made a bit of sweet chocolate and also made lemon drops and sour balls. A new candy for children to enjoy. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. Some person snuck into the doll factory and made dolls that cry real tears. <laughs> A wonderful invention. Little girls will have dolls just like real babies. That same person changed airplanes to fly by little motors. So many changes that this Christmas is going to be the best Christmas yet. Who did this? Who did it? No other than Dr. Bittersweet himself and his friend Crunch. Oh, I don't believe oh, it. I can see that they are hiding behind the barrel. Stand up. Three cheers for Dr. Bittersweet, that great inventor of new toys. <laughs> It was nothing, uh, uh, and I, 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 I had a lot of fun doing it. So did I. Fun? Fun? No, I... It was fun. I never had fun before. I had fun for the first time in my life. And you weren't trying to be bad? Well, yes, I was, but... But I had fun and oh, I don't believe it. I want you to stay here and work in my factory and be an inventor of new toys. Ooh, what are you going to do, Dr. Bittersweet? Uh, let me think about it. Uh, well, uh, I have it. I thought it over. I know the answer. And what is it? Well, I I thought it was fun making trouble for you, Santa, but uh, but it wasn't. I'd love to work here and try to help you make Christmas bigger and better each year. And we want you to. Santa, the sled is ready. It's that time again. Years come and go so fast. Friends, this will be the best Christmas ever. My oldest foes shall now be my friends. Well, it is time. The moon is so bright. We will watch you as you ride out of sight. There are so many children dreaming of this moment. When I return, we will start work on next year's toys. Uh, and I'll think of some good new ones. Oh, 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 I know you will. Reindeers, are you ready? On Dasher and Blitzen. And up went Santa and his eight tiny reindeer, with Santa calling as he drove out of sight. Merry Christmas to all. Ho, 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 ho. And to all, a good night.